Tons of news to talk about today, including potential delays on the launch of the 5070 and 5060, but also potential release dates for the 5070 Ti, possibly still in February. Uh, Der Bauer had a big video talking about a 150 degree Celsius hotspot on 5090 cables, and we've seen reports of these cables melting. However, there's also some multiple testers trying to corroborate that. What are they seeing on their tests? Uh, Nvidia acknowledging some black screen issues and that they're investigating on 50 series cards. We've got some laptop news, some AMD news. Let's go ahead and just hop around to here though, because a lot of people are like, cool, 5080 and 5090 are interesting, but uh, I'm not buying anything that expensive. Supplies to awful. When are we seeing something for like a 5060 or a 5070? Well, NVIDIA's official announcement of the 5070 and the 5070 Ti said availability in February but they never even mentioned a 5060 in their original unveiling of the 50 series. That didn't mean one wasn't coming, but it would mean we would expect uh, that one to come later, and the rumored launch for the 5060 had been March, but that had never been officially stated by NVIDIA. Uh, we're now seeing a number of reports that the 5070 is going to be delayed into, uh, into uh, past February, into March. Now notice it says 5070, not 5070 Ti. So it's still possible we'll see that one coming in February. More on that in a minute, but what's going on with the 5070? A uh, mega size GPU has a pretty good track record on GPU leaks and is claiming the RTX 5070 will be delayed. Instead of February, it will be on the shelf in early March. Now, he doesn't really give reasons. The videocards.com article uh, where I found this info, and all my sources will be linked in the video description, is uh, suggesting is NVIDIA playing cat and mouse with AMD. Because we also have the whole, uh, AMD was expected to release the 9070 and 9070 XT, at least discuss it in January, maybe even launch it in January. But then they've announced that it's coming in March. And one of the main reasons that could be happening is to get a, a feel for what NVIDIA is doing performance and price and availability wise with their 5070 and 5070 Ti. So, uh, so this speculation from the video cards headline is, well, is NVIDIA playing cat and mouse here? So what if we don't launch the 5070 before AMD? Now what are they gonna do? I mean, that's one possibility, but the other possibility is NVIDIA is just doing its own thing and responding to its own situation. Uh, where there is another leaker. I got this sourced from a WCCF Tech article on the topic, but they're referencing their information coming from Ming-Chi Kuo. I probably mispronounced that, apologies if I did. Uh, and they're, uh, let's just read the whole thing. They're saying gamers and power users are eager to get the RTX 5090 and 5080, but chip supply constraints are causing shortages. Supply issues will likely push back mass production of the 5070 and 5060 from the original February, March to March, April. Limited supply means these two cards will sell out instantly, even if production stays on schedule. So this is suggesting that NVIDIA is not pushing back the date due to like, oh, let's see what AMD does if we don't launch first. It's more of just supply issues. Now, corroborating that is the fact that the 5080 and the 5090 seem to be in incredibly short supply, uh, which is leading to awful pricing on the actual retail market. Like if I try to buy a 5080 new right now, I'm seeing listings starting at like $2,000. They'll occasionally flash into stock um, at, at, at a bit lower pricing, but even the direct AIB part partners uh, have been raising prices well above the MSRP. Um, so I, I've reported on that more in a recent video, so I'm not going into too much depth here. The 5090 is just not really in stock unless you're buying it from eBay scalpers. So that's what we're seeing there. Now, is it because demand is crazy or because supply is crazy low? Could always be a combination of the two. But given the 5080s reviews were pretty lackluster, there's at least some indication that there's just not a massive amount of supply here. Um, there's another post uh, referenced in the WCCF Tech article on this uh, that claims that after discussing with one of the largest stores in Taiwan, their entire chain received only 20 units of the 5090 and 300 for the 5080 last week as part of the first batch. Additionally, uh, they spoke with the numerous small sellers in Taiwan, most of whom were lucky to get one or two units uh, for select clients and a few dozen 5080s. None of them have an estimate for the next batch of the 5090. It could take weeks or even months. As for the 5080, a few units will trickle in here and there. 
based on the rough, those rough calculations uh, from the numbers and discussions, this uh, uh, poster is indicating that the first batch 5090s for all of Taiwan was likely under 100 units while the 5080s were around 1,000 or close to it. Now, that's uh, if you trust uh, Kakashi here to have had a conversation to have, uh, you know, accurate information on that. But in general, uh, like you can see a, a ton of other posts like this. You can uh, look at uh, other people who have talked to uh, distributors, distributors who publish their information. It really seems like it was a very low supply launch, especially for the 5090, but even the 5080 wasn't in great supply. So if that is indeed the case, that does lead, lend credence to, well, why launch a 5070 if we don't even have supply for it anyway? And maybe they could build up a bit more in March. However, this post is also saying that limited supply would mean that those cards would sell out instantly, even if production does stay on schedule. So still suggesting that a delay to March probably wouldn't fix things, and it's probably going to be another a fairly low supply launch that probably instantly sells out and then you know who who knows what happens on the actual retail market. So that's how that looks. Hopefully AMD is cooking something good with their 9070 and 9070 XT that comes out at a good price in March and maybe with good supply because if they were ready to go with shipments out in January, uh, maybe they've built up a good supply. That would be kind of nice. Um, it would be a good opportunity for AMD to try to gain some market share if their competition literally isn't selling anything because you just literally can't buy them. Because uh, again, remember that it's not just the 50 series that's in short supply right now. If I tried to buy, uh, you know, a 4080, uh, they're at crazy scalper pricing because they stopped production on these to make room for the 50 series. Uh, if I try to buy a 4090, same issue. The ones that are available in stock new are crazy expensive because again, the, the, they, they uh, cut cutting su uh, production and supply. Even 4070s are well, uh, uh, at least a bit above their MSRP. Occasionally there, there's one in stock kind of near MSRP, but most of the time, uh, well above because supply is extremely low. The 4070 Ti, again, well above its MSRP, supply is extremely low. The 4070 Ti Super, well above its MSRP, supply is extremely low. So even the 40 series isn't really available right now at reasonable pricing. Uh, so with all of those things uh, there, you know, it's like, uh, it'd be nice if uh, somebody comes out with a GPU that's in supply that you can buy. That would be nice. That'd be a good way to gain market share. Anyway, that's how all of that is looking. But are we still going to get the 5070 Ti in February? Uh, well, there have been a number of indications that it's coming on February 20th. Uh, WCF Tech has an article where they saw that MSI had a page up with a literal countdown saying when it would be available, pointing to February 20th for the release date. However, I followed up on that link and now it's a 404 page, you know, can't be found, which likely means that I well, I mean, it definitely means the ta page was taken down. Now, was it taken down because the date was inaccurate? Did it get delayed? Or I would say the more likely or at least equally likely is NVIDIA was like, hey, we haven't announced a release date MSI. Don't do that. Stop. So even if it was accurate, it could have been taken down just because they're not supposed to be sharing that information right now. Uh, we've also seen other evidence of that February 20, uh, 20th release date for the 4070 Ti. There's a French retailer listing the 20th of February as the release date for the 5070 Ti. Again, this one was spotted by WCCF Tech, or at least that's where I saw it spotted. Um, and they've got screenshots for that showing that you could order it on February 20th. Um, and then I also saw videocards.com spotting uh, another one, although actually this looks like the same retailer here. So, so that's the same retailer, not additional corroborating evidence, but this one uh, uh, spotted by videocards.com again, February 20th. So uh, it looks like that at least was the planned release date, whether or not it still is, I, I don't know. But again, uh, the release, the, like the tweets, like for mega size GPU are specifically saying the 5070, not the 5070 Ti delayed into early March. So it's not specifically referencing the TI. Now, when we do get the TI, if it is coming up on the 20th, remember that NVIDIA's official performance claims, if you don't allow for multi-frame gen versus not multi-frame gen, when compared to the 4070 Ti, uh, was showing what looks to be about a 20% performance uplift on the games that aren't showing multi-frame gen versus not. Um, so uh, one thing to keep in mind then is if you look at that in terms of like relative performance, like if we go to tech power-ups relative performance chart, 
Uh, if you set the 4070 Ti as the baseline, 20% faster than that um, does put it ahead of a 4070 Ti Super, but not by a lot, because the 4070 Ti Super was already about 9 or 10% faster than the baseline 4070 Ti. So you would expect maybe 10% or so faster than the 4070 Ti Super uh, for a $50 lower MSRP. But again, do MSRPs mean anything if it ends up just at scalper pricing anyway? We'll have to see what comes of that. But that's what we'd be expecting in terms of performance. Now, what about the issues with the 5090 cables melting? Uh, so uh, there have been several uh, user reports of the 5070, uh, sorry, 5090 uh, cables melting. Uh, however, there haven't been just like a massive number of them. But honestly, if 5090 supply is incredibly low, then you wouldn't expect a massive number, even if it is, uh, you know, a high percentage of people having issues. Anyway, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, Der Bauer had a video um, referenced here by videocards.com where he did show that uh, a cable was having a hotspot as high as 150 degrees Celsius. Now, there's no indication that that isn't true. He is absolutely seeing that. But the question then is, is that happening on other 5090s or just this one? So there have been other testing uh, trying to, uh, you know, check if they're seeing the same issue. So like Falcon Northwest, uh, who is a, a, you know, they're a PC integrator. They build custom gaming PCs, so pre-built systems, people can buy them. Uh, so they would obviously have access to a bunch of 5090s because they get a bunch of them to put in builds. Uh, so they say huge respect for Dubauer's testing, but we're not seeing anything like his setup's results. Saying we tested many 5090 founders builds with multiple PSU and cable types undergoing days of closed chassis burn-in. Uh, they're showing images of the temp temps, and again, they're not seeing anything uh, like 150 degrees Celsius. So, and again, they have a bunch of, they didn't give an exact number, of 5090 founders builds uh, where they can do this testing. So again, there does absolutely seem to be an issue on at least this 5090, but uh, are other 5090s experiencing the same problem? It doesn't appear to be any of Falcon Northwest's 5090s uh, experiencing that issue. We also have Andreas Schilling uh, reporting um, that he had uh, looked to see if he was seeing a, a different number of, uh, looks like, amps uh, on, um, uh, on different cables, different pins, and was seeing some variation in some initial testing. However, he said that he did a reseat of the cable on both sides, PSU and card, with the GeForce RTX 5090 FE, now with a perfect fine distribution over all six cables and pins. So in other words, is there a massive issue with the 5090 cable situation? Um, it seems like there is a real issue on at least some 5090s and some cables but it doesn't seem to be an issue on all 5090s and cables. Now, I don't have a lot of electrical testing or even heat testing equipment, and I have one 5090. Uh, nothing seems out of the ordinary on mine. <laughs> but again, that's not super scientific, and I am a sample size of one. So there's the latest info on that. Now, that's not the only issue that has been being reported with the 50 series. Uh, there have also been reported of potentially uh, driver-related issues where some people were seeing um, black screen problems on 5080s and 5090s. Uh, we have PC Gamer getting a response directly from NVIDIA, but the uh, entire response is basically, um, let's see, where is the direct quote? They had a direct quote. Uh, pretty sure it was along the lines of, we are investigating the issue. Why don't I see the direct quote? Uh, here we go. Indeed, we've requeried NVIDIA and have been told we are investigating the reported issues with the 50 series. So that's all NVIDIA has to say on the matter. They are looking into it, but as far as I can tell, uh, there is not yet any official statement from NVIDIA on what is exactly going on with that. Uh, anecdotally, there have also been a lot of reports online of people experiencing driver issues on their 40 series cards when they updated to the new drivers that launched uh, with the 50 series launch. So there could be some driver related issues going on here. I haven't been able to find any uh, exact details on exactly what is happening and exactly how to fix it. That That isn't just kind of anecdotal. This person seeing this, this person seeing that. Anyway, so that's where uh, we're at with that. Now, if you're interested in getting a gaming laptop, 
the 50 series laptop pre-orders are starting February 25th from OEMs. That's officially from NVIDIA, uh, an NVIDIA tweet here. So keep your eye out for that if you are interested. Uh, maybe there'll be less of a scalper market going on in the laptop space than just selling the GPUs directly. I don't know. I don't know what the pricing will be. Also, I focus more on desktops. But if you're interested in laptops, there you go. The 25th is when you can uh, look into pre-ordering if that's what you'd like to do. Now, a little more AMD information. We do have uh, an interesting APU coming out from AMD. They have their, oh, this naming scheme. AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, codenamed Strix Halo APU. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's interesting about this is that it has a 40 compute unit iGPU, uh, which is branded as the Radeon 8060S. And AMD has made some pretty big claims in their uh, official benchmarks. I don't know if they, there's a screenshot of it here in this uh, particular article, but AMD has claimed some, some pretty big performance numbers when compared to like a 4070 laptop. Although the 4070 laptop they compared it with was pretty uh, power and thermally constrained compared to some other variants, so do keep that in mind. Um, but we do now have a leaked 3 Mark score, uh, which seems to put it... Uh, uh, significantly faster than any previous iGPU, which would make sense because it has way more compute units than any previous iGPU, um, but also doesn't necessarily put it into like crazy performance territory. Uh, the uh, WCCF Tech article here kind of stacks it up as uh, faster than a 3060 in the ballpark of a 4060, but a bit slower. Uh, in terms of the 3D Mark Time Spy graphics score. So there's that. Now this is one leaked score, so we'll have to see what happens once these are actually available for third, full third-party reviews. And I'll end on a little more interesting uh, AMD uh, news, but this is really more just for the Chinese market, but sometimes these GRE cards have ended up coming to other markets as well. Like the 7900 GRE started out as more of a China exclusive and then did go worth worldwide. Uh, AMD has a RX 7650 GRE available in the Chinese market, and it has launched. Now, one thing we can talk about is its specs, and the other thing we can talk about is its name, because previously the GRE models uh, stood for Golden Rabbit Edition because they launched in, uh, I think it was the Year of the Rabbit, and they were a Chinese market thing, so Golden Rabbit Edition. It's no longer the Year of the Rabbit. So apparently to keep the GRE branding, they had to make up a new thing for GRE to stand for. So it is now the Great Radeon Edition. There you go. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing we have is the specs on it. So uh, again, unless you're in the Chinese market, this might not mean a lot to you right now, but if these do come West, what does it mean? Uh, the 7650 GRE appears to basically be an RX 7600 with a tiny upgrade to boost clocks. Other than that, it appears to be exactly the same thing, and that comes with a 5 watt power limit increase, which means it has lower boost clocks than the 7600 XT version, and it does not have the 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It is an 8 gigabyte card. So essentially, the 7650 GRE appears to be an RX 7600. Maybe uh, a tiny factory overclocked version. That's what it appears to be. Anyway, right now, that is currently uh, kind of region locked, so make of it what you will. Let me know what you think about all of this news in the comments section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.